Welcome to the PD Pet Care Vlogs. I'm Dr. Kath Watson and today we're going to talk about how to curb your cat's hunting. First up, the only really effective way to keep wildlife safe in your surrounding area and also to keep your cat safe is actually to keep them contained. Whether that's solely as an indoor cat or whether you have a catio or a fenced backyard that they can't escape from, it's the only fail-safe way of keeping them and the local wildlife safe. But aside from that, we need to understand that our lovely cuddly cats that spend lots of time sitting on our laps or curled up by the fire or on the bed, on the couch, actually are natural born killers and are very, very effective at it. Uh, and we need to understand that this is a, an innate instinct that they have and so somehow we need to give them the stimulation that means that we can either re redirect that energy uh, or give them an outlet to hunt in a safe way. Number one, making sure that your cat is well fed. If they're hungry then obviously their hunting instinct is going to kick in even more desperately. This is not to say you should feed your cat to the level of obesity, because obviously that's not good for them either. But you can actually turn feeding your cat into a stimulating and simulated hunting type activity. And the easy way of doing this is just hiding food around the house. Send them out exploring, don't have to hide it in the same place every time because obviously they know where to go. Um, but make it, make it more difficult for them to find the food. You can use old toilet rolls, egg cartons, and um, there's plenty of toys out there that you can hide food in. Even better if they can roll around and uh, they have to engage in that hunting type behaviour to actually get access to the food. So great ways there. Also something as simple as having a piece of string with a scrunched up bit of paper tied on the end of it. Tuck it down the back of your pants as you're walking around the house. Your cat's got a free moving target to, to hunt and chase that's not directed at you. So obviously the string needs to be long enough that the cat's not going to accidentally get your legs in the process. Um, there's also plenty of toys out there, things like wands and so on, that um, you can attach toys to the end of or just use the wand to help stimulate some of that hunting behaviour and, and uh, give them the exercise that they need from it as well. If you do have a cat who spends a bit of time outdoors then there are, and, and it's not going to be contained, then there are some things you can do that may help, and I say may because cats are very clever creatures that learn how to get around some of the stuff that we do to try and curb some of this hunting behaviour. So wearing a collar with bells on it, and I say bells because two bells is more effective than one, but you do have to bear in mind that cats are usually ambush hunters. So that means they're going to be moving very slowly, not triggering those bells to work. So uh, they're often able to get very close to their prey before they make that sudden movement when the bells will be effective, in which case it's often too late for the bird or the mouse or the lizard that is um, their target. So by all means have bells, um, like I say, two more effective than one because they're more likely to, to set each other off. Having brightly coloured collars, even the, the ruffle type ones, the Elizabethan style collars that don't interfere with your ability to move as such, um, but are brightly covered so it's more likely that birds in particular are going to be able to see them. Uh, reflective strips can also help, also helps them be seen, which is not a bad thing either. Uh, keeping their nails trimmed, so cats are going to be constantly keeping their nails sharpened, it's a natural behaviour and it's, they need to shed their nails uh, constantly which is part of what that scratching behaviour is all about. But if you can keep their nails trimmed slightly blunter, maybe slightly less effective at trapping things, um, it is illegal to uh, declaw cats in New Zealand and should be everywhere in the world, extremely painful procedure, so please don't consider that. But you can also get caps that will go on the ends of nails. Uh, need to be glued on. They again can help reduce some of the damage but in reality if your cat's managed to trap something in its paws there's a pretty good chance the teeth are coming next. Uh, if you have bird feeders in your garden to help attract birds in 
then make sure they're out of reach of cats so that so just be aware of how agile cats are as well obviously they can climb trees and they can also climb up posts so having a feeder that is dangling off something that they can't easily get to so smaller branches in a tree um, or off a post and then out to the side so it's not so easy for the cats to get there and obviously high enough off the ground that they can't leap to it um, the other thing is trying to keep your cat indoors around dawn and dusk they're the really big key hunting times that cats are most likely to be active it's not to say they won't hunt during the rest of the day as well because they will uh, but dawn and dusk absolutely the, the most active times often for their prey as well so, like I say, there is no foolproof way of preventing cats from hunting. It is a natural instinct. What we really want to do is redirect them to something uh, that to us is more appropriate. So, ideally a non-lethal <laughs> hunting target, like I say, like scrunched up um, paper or a toy. Uh, and where possible, keep them contained so their access to wildlife is limited, making sure that they've still got that stimulating environment.